the grand vision uh, that I have for IPLD is towards a decentralized programming environment. Um, and what I mean by programming environment is in the, in the sense of Unix. Um, some people talk about the core of the Unix philosophy being having composable utilities that you can put together to do a big job, but I think the real core, the content of the Unix philosophy is, is more uh, uh, succinctly captured in this quote, um, that a file is a sequence of bytes. The reason programs weren't composable before this is because uh, people didn't use the same conventions for how to actually put bytes onto the disk. And so they couldn't have programs coexisting because there was no environment in which they could exchange data without clobbering each other. Um, so the file system is really sort of the core of what all of the rest of the Unix philosophy is built on top of. And now what we really want to do is move towards computing with DAGs instead of computing with sequences of bytes. We're working with structured data, and so we need to revisit, uh, or at least I think it's profitable to revisit, a lot of the uh, higher order kinds of computational ideas um, that, that go on top of the file system. Um, some of the things that this kind of structured data storage as DAGs uh, uh, can enable when we have uh, data that can be en encoded in these structured ways, we can do improved deduplication of common uh, sub-elements uh, because we, we know where to chunk it. We aren't just chunking by, by megabyte or something. Uh, we can prefetch pieces that are like the index of a video file, that th things that we know are going to need in order to be able to uh, efficiently access the rest of it. We can do those efficient accesses uh, of uh, different semantic pieces, different chunks of a file. Um, and we can do uh, lazy access patterns where we, we can load a data structure and have it appear transparently as though it were in memory, but in fact, when we uh, follow pointers, we're, we're following hash links on the back end. Um, some use cases for these kinds of uh, computational filters um, that you might want to put on top of a, um, an IPLD DAG and say, now, this is a new DAG, but it's not an actual thing in IPFS. It's a computational transform of some previous thing. Uh, we might want to do, for example, decompression. Um, we might want to do transparent decryption. Um, conversion between different formats, different sorts of views, slices, lenses, looking up things in an index. Um, so you can uh, sort of give an, uh, an identifier to do an expression that looks up a key in a key value block. Um, or even more advanced kinds of queries like with relational algebra, um, or even generalized sort of data analyses where I want to be able to reproduce the data analysis and instead of putting the results of the analysis on IPFS and saying, trust me, I did this analysis on this data, I put the actual code on there and, and so you can, uh, you can recompute it yourself or you can get it from a cache, et cetera. Um, but the things that we desire from this kind of thing, we want a pure deterministic reproducible semantics because we want to be able to cache that. We want some kind of a query planner to be able to say, oh, this sub-expression has been computed before by someone you trust or it's been computed in a verifiable way or you computed it yourself yesterday and I have it on disk, I'll fetch it from there. Or if it's something that's really fast to compute um, and, and it's going to be faster than fetching it or finding someone in the network who's already done it, then I'll do it myself. Those sorts of decisions you want to be able to leave up to optimization, which means that you need to be confident in the deterministic reproducible output of, of your computational elements. Um, and we're going to need an elegant story for, for upgrades and versioning, not just of data, which is, which is relatively easy to handle in a, in a Git-style way, um, but also of the schemas, uh, the ways that we represent the data, and then even, even more fundamental than that, um, we might introduce new kinds of questions that you can ask about data um, to go along with those new representations. And so there's some open research problems uh, about how to best represent those kinds of things. Um, and, of course, we want the core of this to be easy to implement. So we want to build as many of the features of this as possible on top of other features so that at the bottom, it's very, very simple. The untyped lambda calculus is the ultimate version of this. Um, we're going to try and get as close to that as we can. Um, and wide platform support um, leveraging WebAssembly. Um, so I'm going to run through, uh, in, in my remaining 30 seconds, a whole bunch of different steps on the way to a decentralized programming environment. So there's data definition, a static language of value literals, um, sort of JSON style serialization lenses for actual formats so that you can represent values in these schemas in all sorts of different ways with, depending on what your application needs. We'll have selectors, which are like maps and filters, queries where you can bind variables, do recursion, um, an object model for exposing those kinds of queries as APIs, uh, giving them human readable names and such, database style indices, um, then beyond immutable data, CRDTs, capabilities, actors, and ultimately we'll get you know, unrestricted computation um, verifiably in, the, in, in this decentralized environment. Um, out of time, thank you very much. <laughs>